Hello, I'm Dr. Laith Farjo, an orthopedic surgeon specializing in advanced arthroscopic surgery in Brighton, Michigan. Today I wanted to talk about acetabular labral tears of the hip, a common cause of hip pain in teens and adults. The hip is a ball and socket joint, and around the socket there is an O-ring called the labrum. Tears can occur in this labrum for several reasons, the most common of which is bone spurs, which is a process called femoroacetabular impingement. In addition, direct trauma or arthritis can also cause tears. Labral tears are a common cause of pain in the groin, particularly with movement of the hip, and they occur in patients of all ages, but more so uh, in teenagers and younger adults. Older patients can have labral tears, but often they have arthritis as well. Symptoms typically include pain in the groin, pain with twisting or sleeping on the hip, and popping, clicking, or catching in the hip area. Diagnosis of these tears begins by simply talking to the patient and performing a physical examination. X-rays are obtained to look for bone spurs or arthritis. An MRI arthrogram is a special test that is used to look for specifically the labral tear. And then finally, it's important to rule out any other sources of potential hip pain that may be coming from other places other than the hip. Conservative or non-operative treatment for labral tears consists of treatments with anti-inflammatory medications, injections, and physical therapy. Unfortunately, because this is a mechanical problem, frequently these do not work. While open surgery can be performed for these tears, I typically recommend arthroscopic surgery for most patients because it is less invasive and less painful. There are two ways to treat the torn labrum. One is with debridement, which is essentially removing the torn tissue, and this is used for smaller tears or more complex shredded tears in which we are unable to get a good suture around the labrum. Typically, this occurs in older patients. We can also repair the labrum when the labrum is a more solid piece that we're able to suture together, and that's more frequent in younger patients. Most of these procedures are performed in conjunction with other surgeries such as a femoroplasty or acetabular rim trimming, which is to remove the bone spurs that cause the tears in the first place. Here's an example of a shredded type of labral tear. The blue arrow is showing you the torn labrum and the shredded tissue. Uh, this is in the anterolateral quadrant of the um, hip and is a very common location for labral tears. We use this device called a motorized shaver to remove the torn tissue. You can see here everything's performed underwater. The motorized shaver is removing the tissue and it's being sucked out of the joint. We're only removing the torn tissue, leaving behind the good or intact labrum behind it. Since the labrum that's behind it is still attached to the acetabulum, we don't need to perform a repair on that. Here you can see the labrum after we've smoothed it out. Obviously, you'll still see some small little jagged edges because this is highly magnified. This is a different patient showing a tear in a different position. This is a posterolateral tear, which is a little bit more unusual. Again, you can see that it's the torn flimsy tissue that's being removed by the motorized shaver to smooth it out. This is yet another labral tear in a different patient. Uh, the femoral head is to the left and the acetabulum is uh, in the center of the screen. And the labral tear is up in the upper right hand corner, again anterolateral, the most common location for these tears. You can see here I was probing it to ensure that the labrum was well attached. You can see I'm using something called an electrothermal flex probe and basically this helps to shrink or debris the tissue uh, by melting it away. Since it's a small tear, I don't want to use that motorized shaver because it's a little bit too aggressive and it may injure the rest of the labrum. So we simply run this uh, device over the labral tear. It will essentially melt away the torn tissue leaving behind the good tissue. We take care in avoiding injury to the acetabular uh, cartilage in doing this. Here is a different type of tear. This is a reparable type of labral tear. Uh, and obviously, we will try to repair these uh, labral tears if we can. Uh, and here you can see we've got a pretty big chunk of the labrum that's come detached off of the acetabulum. First thing we do is we use this motorized shaver to remove some of the frayed edges just at the edge of the labral tear. We try not to remove too much of the labrum. Then I use this thing called an elevator. Uh, we're going to pass it in front and, uh, and behind the tear to stimulate bleeding so that when we reattach the labrum, it will heal. Once we're done with that, we're going to pass a suture around the labrum. Here you can see a special uh, device that I have loaded with suture. I'm passing it from behind the labrum now to the other side, and essentially we're going to lasso the labrum. We use this suture to help reattach it back onto the acetabulum. Now I'm going to reach in and grab the end that I just passed. 
And you can see here now, I've essentially, I've lassoed the labrum and I've got a suture all the way around it. The next step is going to be to pass the suture into a anchor. So here you can see we're drilling a hole for this little anchor that we insert into the acetabular bone. The anchor is a plastic type of anchor. It's not metal. It doesn't show up on x-rays. It won't cause any further problems. That yellow thing you see there is the anchor going into place. You can see we've loaded the suture into it. And now we're going to impact the anchor into the bone. There are little wings on the anchor so that once we seat it in the bone, those wings will expand uh, and hold the anchor in place. There's different types of suture anchors. This is just one of the types that we use. We have other types whereby we can tie sutures uh, and tie knots in the um, hip if we have to. Uh, the technology on these anchors is changing very rapidly. Once we've secured the anchor, then we simply cut the remaining tail of the suture that we placed into it. Here you can see the completed repair. Again, the femoral head is to the left. Uh, and you're going to see the repair now from a different angle in the peripheral space, uh, again showing the labrum reattached to the acetabulum. All of these procedures are performed as outpatient surgeries. Patients go home the same day. Uh, typically, they're placed on crutches with partial weight bearing, meaning about 50% of your weight, for somewhere between one and three weeks, depending what type of procedure we did and whether we did any bone work. Early range of motion is encouraged, and um, some patients will even get on an exercise bike within those first one to three weeks. Jogging on a treadmill happens at four to six weeks, and then twisting sports is limited for three to four months before I let patients get back to that type of activity. Thank you.